welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Katie, I'm a full-time sketchbook artist and in today's video I'm going to be testing exactly that because I have a brand new sketchbook to try out, one I've not used before and I'm excited to give it a go. So like I said, this is a new to me brand but they have been around and started in 2020, so a good few years now. But I've always been intrigued by these and I've always loved the design, but I've never actually tried them. I recently finished my large Royal Talon sketchbook. I'll leave a link up here if you wanted to see the sketchbook tour, but because I finished that one I was eager to try something new. I'm not super brand loyal when it comes to art supplies. I like the Royal Talons because they are really affordable, but I also wanted something that might be able to hold more media a bit better. I do find that the Royal Talons aren't great with watercolour and lots of wet mediums. So I thought I would try this one, which is called the Oro Blanco. It's 310 by 222 millimetres, so it is bigger than A4. But what I really like about this is I like the open binding. I think that's a really nice aesthetic element to this with the little label at the bottom. You can get these in different colours and you can also get different sizes. So they have different names on the Pith website, so you've got the Oro Blanco, you've also got the Tangelo. There's quite a few different sizes, and I do think that they have different papers as well. But this one that I got is in the Azure colour, and I actually bought this from Jackson's Art for £15.73, but it usually retails for £20. It has 76 pages, but the GSM is higher. I'm going to compare it to the Royal Talons because I use that so much and because that's generally my go-to. But the Royal Talons is 140 GSM, whereas this one is 200 GSM. The thread is polycotton and when you open it out it does lay flat, which is really nice to see and not something that the Royal Talons does. Pith is also designed and printed in the UK and they're very environmentally conscious, which I really like and I really like that I'm sort of supporting something in the UK and it's really easily available in places like Jackson's and also Cass Art. So as I said at the beginning, I am a mixed media sketchbook artist, so I use a whole array of supplies and I want to see how this sketchbook holds up. For the rest of the video, I'm going to be doing a voiceover, but you'll see me try acrylic paint, gouache, acrylic ink, liquid watercolour, loads and loads of different art supplies on one page just to see just how much it can take, if it pills the paper, if it struggles and warps, I'm really going to put this to the test. I will check in at the end just with a little outro, so I'll see you then and enjoy the video. So just want to start by comparing and showing you the differences between some other sketchbooks I have. So we've got the Royal Talons I was talking about and the Strathmore 500 series mixed media sketchbook. And here you can really see the difference in their colour and the paper stock. So the Royal Talons is ivory, the Pith and the Strathmore are much whiter and here you can see that really lovely binding. I would say that the other two don't lay as flat as this one. This one definitely lays the flattest, which is really nice. And a little look at the pages inside. So like I said earlier, the Strathmore had the least, and this one isn't far behind the Royal Talons either. So here's a look at my desk. I really did get everything out. I've basically got all of my supplies all laid out here in easy reach. I've got some acrylic ink, watercolour ink, acrylic markers, coloured pencils, brush pens, near colours, gouache, liquid watercolour and acrylic paint. So I was really ready to throw everything at this spread and see how it did. So I'm just opening it up to the first double spread. I tend to always miss that first page, but I really wanted a full open spread for this one so I could try out all of my different materials. I'm starting with a beige Posca, which I do use quite often. I liked how it went down on the smooth paper and it didn't pill up like it sometimes can do if I'm going over and over on the Royal Talons. I'm also coming in with a Molotow acrylic marker and I'm basically using this as like a swatching page but I'm using it as a base layer. I just want to mention this liquid watercolour which is an Ecoline brand. I put it straight down on the paper and you can see it's gone straight through to the other side. So I was a little bit disappointed with that because I think the paper really sucks in and absorbs a lot of the wet mediums. I found, and you'll see throughout this video, that it does better with the thicker mediums, but the watercolour, and especially where I've put it straight down on the page, the paper just really sucks it in and really absorbs it in, so it doesn't sit on the paper very much. It really soaks in quickly. You can see that here with these Rora and Klinger inks as well. You see how it's kind of giving that mottled texture where it's sunk into the page immediately. And it does mix nicely, but it's something to think about because it's similar to the Royal Talons in that way where the paper just sucks it all up. Whereas I found with the Strathmore, it has a bit more time, so it does sit on top of the paper. So 
I was a bit surprised to see this was more like the Royal Talons in that way, except obviously it is whiter. But in terms of taking the wet medium, it sinks in very fast. So you can see here I am sort of using really broad brush strokes, just picking any medium that I fancy at the time. I'm using quite a bit of water here, so you will see later on where I show you how the paper fares with that. On this left side, I've come in with some acrylic ink. This is probably my favourite medium so far to use in this sketchbook because it sits really nicely on the paper because the page is so smooth. So this was helpful for me because it took this medium fine in terms of mixing it straight on the page. But obviously, like with the liquid watercolour, it didn't. So it does depend on your medium, but for this acrylic ink, it was totally fine. And I really loved the way that it blended together. So there's no rhyme or reason really to the colours. I do know what I'm going to be drawing, but I was trying to use neutrals and greens and foresty colours because that is going to be my final reference. But in terms of putting these colours down in like specific places, there really wasn't a method to it. I was just putting down lots of different mediums and just mixing up some random colours. So I know that I'm going to be working on top and I can always use gouache or thick acrylic paint to cover any of this. But I just find having this base gives me something to work on top of and creates more atmosphere. Here I am putting some pan pastels onto the bottom right corner and I really love this. It went on super smoothly because it is white paper it does show the colours better than in the Royal Talons. And I really like the way this did sink into the paper so this was definitely a plus for that. You can see I'm using a soft pastel here so the stick kind and I can blend that with my fingers straight away and really mix it nicely. So that was a medium that worked really well. I'm coming in with some gouache here, again mixing it straight on the page. Sometimes I do use my paper palettes, sometimes I do use the paper to mix straight onto. So it was helpful to see just how much medium it could take. I'm using the gouache quite thickly here and then to the left I'm adding on a bit more water. I'm also coming in with my gelatos, so if you saw last week's video, you'll know that it's a new supply for me and I'm still testing out how to use them. But I'm applying them dry here and then coming in with a wet round brush and just mixing it in. You can still see some of the marks, but I think it works well for this layer. Here are some Derwent Intense blocks. So I've dipped it in water to create that really rich and thick pigment. And I really love that texture. I've also wet my finger and I'm applying that straight onto the page and you can see where it was a little bit drier so it still creates that nice texture despite it being a really smooth stock. I'm also using coloured pencils here, I'm really running out of room in terms of the space I had on the page so I am also squeezing in some acrylic markers from Montana pens that I've mixed myself, just squeezing that into the final area of this thread. Now I'm starting to add in a few more colours for where I know there's going to be like some trees and some leaves so I'm coming in with my acrylic markers and my gelatos on top of the layer I've already put down. And I didn't have to wait long for this to dry, and that's again because of the absorbency of the paper. So here's a quick look at how this base layer is looking. This was a really good way to see how much the paper took. It was really helpful to try all of these mediums in this way. I think it's helpful to do. So you will see here that the paper did curl. It really curled up at the edges simply because of the amount of pigment that I put down there. It's been a few weeks since I've done this and I've closed the book now and so it has flattened out fine but it's just something to think about where it did warp a little bit just because of the amount on the page. So I'm coming in now with some more materials. I've put down some brush pens here and it's interesting because it's not absorbed into the paper simply because I've got that barrier down. And I think that's a really good thing about the base layer and it's why I could layer so many mediums on top. Instead of using more mediums that would then absorb straight into the paper, I've got that acrylic ink layer and some other mediums as well that kind of acts as that barrier from the paper stock itself. So it really helped me to be able to layer a lot on. And because it's also matte, it meant I could layer on my coloured pencils like I'm doing here really, really well. So it worked out really nicely to have that base layer and also to work out my mediums. So I think even if you don't create a base layer like this, it's always really, really helpful to swatch your mediums into your sketchbook. You don't have to create a big base layer like this for a final painting. You could just easily swatch your mediums. But I think it's really helpful to do that because you can work out how your sketchbook reacts to things, how many things you can layer, whether it's a sketchbook that's suitable for watercolour or if it's not. 
And I would say that this one probably isn't because it does soak in the pigment so quickly, whereas my Strathmore holds the wet media a lot better in terms of using watercolour. But it's really helpful, so I definitely recommend it, and it's also really fun just to play with your art supplies. I really enjoyed creating the base layer for the spread and then working on top of it. So here's a good example of putting gelatos on top and the wetness from my brush not really affecting the paper now because I've got that layer of marker underneath. It also means I can smudge it, so I think because I've got that barrier it's not absorbing really fast into the paper, I've got more time to be able to smudge it on the top. So that was really helpful and I'm really leaning into like smudging things with my fingers and being a bit more tactile with my work. I used to be quite a neat and careful artist so I'm really trying to lean into getting a little bit more messy and really encouraging play into my work so getting my fingers wet and smudging things really help with that. I'm also using this really old brush which helps for texture. Last month on Patreon we did focus on texture and you can really see that in this spread. So it was nice to use some of my older brushes and really use them badly. I wasn't trying to create specific brush strokes, I was just trying to create lots of different marks and textures. So I'm coming in with some acrylic markers here and one of the ways that I work the best is I'll try something and see if it's right and if I like it then I'm going to do it more on other areas of the page. And that's generally how I work, my process is very intuitive. So I don't work with a method, I don't work with one thing and then another. I'm very much, I'll pick a medium based on its colour rather than working in set layers. But for this area, for example, I put down that lighter acrylic marker and I really didn't like it. So it kind of was a mistake, but I don't see it as that because I learned that it wasn't right. So I'll know not to do that elsewhere in the picture. If I'm doing something I do like, like the neo colours, then I'll do that elsewhere. So generally I do find that my painting develops that way and I find it's a really nice organic way to create because I'm not really thinking about the end result so I'm not going to be disappointed because I don't already have something in my head that I want it to turn out like. And I think that's really freeing and definitely a method I recommend. Here I'm adding on some brush pens like for the golden light on the branches that I was trying to get. And then for the really dark pigment I'm using Derwin Ink Tents blocks again. I've dipped it in water and it just creates a really lovely richness of colour and a really nice texture too. I'm coming in with some water and that helps to bring out the brown, so where it was quite dark where it was laid on really thickly. And then here's a really good example like I was mentioning about mistakes or learning what I don't like. So there was some ivy on this tree trunk and I really didn't like it when I added the green. So I just come in and I watered it down and tried to cover it a little bit, coming in with my near colours. And I just learned that it wasn't right for this piece, so I just covered it up. And I think when we are creating, we often can get into that mindset of making things right. But it's only paint and we can paint over it. And I think that's one of the best things about using mixed media and being a mixed media artist is you're not limited with your supplies. So if it is wrong, you can just put some white acrylic paint over it. You can start all over again if you want to. It's really low stakes. So I feel like I have been talking a million miles an hour. So if you do have any questions, please do pop them in the comments as we go. But I've been talking a lot about my process, which you can see on the screen. But I do want to talk a little bit more about the PISS sketchbook itself, because obviously this is a review video. So like I said, I was a little bit disappointed with how it's taking wet media. I thought that because it was thicker paper stock it would hold it better, but I still don't think I'd use watercolour that much in this sketchbook, simply because of that absorbency I talked about at the beginning. I do think it's really good for mixed media, but I wouldn't use it for really wet mediums. I'd still go for my Strathmore for that, and maybe some other sketchbooks which I haven't discovered yet. I don't think I've found my perfect sketchbook for watercolour yet, so I'm open to your suggestions, so if you do have one that you loved, please do share them with me down in the comments. I do really like the smoothness and I'm really happy with the colour of the paper. So when I don't want to go for an ivory toned paper like in the Royal Talons, I'll definitely be reaching for this one simply because of the whiteness. And it does hold the acrylic base mediums really, really well. And I'll still use gouache and maybe a bit of watercolour in this, but certainly not watered down as I expected it to. 
You'll see at the end where it's buckled and I will also show you some close-ups of any of the water and the pilling coming through. So hopefully that will help you see how the paper holds a lot of these mediums and that is useful if you are looking to buy one yourself. We are just layering lots of things on top of things. I'm putting down gouache straight onto the paper and it doesn't pill too much. It's only pilling with some of the wetter mediums. I haven't tested markers like watercolour brush markers straight onto the page yet so that would be interesting to see just how quickly that soaks in and I wonder how many layers I could get but I think if I put a base layer down first then it wouldn't be an issue. It was really nice to be able to smudge things which is because of all the layers that have come before it and that's generally how I work as a mixed media artist so that's definitely something I'll do again in the future as well. So after all those messy brush strokes and the smudging, I'm coming in with a bit more refined detail here in the bottom corner. I really like the way that this looks with the layered up sort of grass blades. Just coming in with coloured pencils there. I'm also coming in with some warmer colours just to bring some of those autumnal shades down. And I just really like this corner. I'm really pleased with this area in particular. I think I did overwork it as a whole. I think there's quite a lot on here, obviously because we were testing it out, but I think I did go a little bit too far in terms of messiness but this corner is one of my favourites just because it feels a bit more considered and just having these smaller lines make it feel that way even though I created the base layer in the exact same way as the rest just having these smaller marks really helped me to feel like this was more purposeful. Here you can see that I'm actually picking up a lot of the medium that I put down so it wasn't completely dry so it's creating that scratchy effect which is just adding an extra layer of texture so I was quite pleased with that. I'm trying some more gouache here underneath this tree at the back and then coming in with a really dry fan brush which again just creates more texture. So this was a photo reference I've taken from a book but I really love the atmosphere so you can see in the distance I did use a lighter colour to try and create some sort of mistiness in the trees and I do try and come back and create more texture in that way. I'm also coming in with my near colours, so just creating lines which I really enjoy doing in the landscapes. And then coming in and filling this final corner. This was probably the trickiest part for me because I didn't quite know how to finish it off. I did feel like I was overworking at this point so I didn't want to add too much more, but I did want to add a bit more contrast. So that's why I've come in with the wet dough and ink tense block again. And then because I liked the line work from the other corner, I'm trying that here. But it's still quite wet. I was being quite impatient not letting that dry. It's not sinking in as quickly because of that layer like I keep mentioning. So it just means I can scratch in whilst it's still wet, which I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So here are some more of those pencil marks. But like I said, I didn't want to add too much more. And then here I am adding a, I think this is a Solway Blue, a Derwent drawing pencil just to create some more of that atmosphere. I really liked like working in this negative space way of going between the trees and the trunks that could be in the distance here in the background. And I think that's another element about this piece I really am pleased with. So here I'm turning the page so you can see a close up of where the really wet mediums have come through on the paper. So you can really see, especially at the top and towards the middle where I was putting down that watercolor ink, and again, that watercolour ink where it's come through straight away. And here's a look at the final spread so you can see all of the close-ups, some more textures and just see it as a whole. It did take a lot and I think that helped having that base layer first. I think that there are definitely some mediums that it works better with. But I'm really happy with the final result and the way that it came together, even if it's slightly overworked. So I'm just coming in with an x-ray now just to round up my thoughts. So I'm just going to end this video with a very brief roundup. You'll have heard me talk about it all in the voiceover and I have to say that I was slightly disappointed with how much this did buckle. I thought that the paper would be slightly thicker. It is thicker than my Royal Talons but it doesn't feel like it holds a huge amount more. You can kind of see here in this close up where the pages has buckled a bit but to be fair I was throwing quite a lot at it. I think the medium I was most disappointed in was the liquid watercolour because that went straight through but it does do that on Aurora Talons. I think just because I thought this was going to be a lot thicker paper, even though I did know the DSM, I was expecting it to be able to take more media than it did. 
Having said that, I do think this is on par, and I do really like the colour of the paper. Compared to the creaminess of the Royal Talons I use, I love the whiteness of this. I also really like that it lays flat, and I do think that I will buy it again in the future, and maybe I'll try some of the other sizes too. I'd love to know what you think of Pith sketchbooks if you've used them before, or if you want to try them out. We will use our mediums very differently, so I'd love to know your thoughts down below in the comments. A huge thank you to my patrons, their support allows me to create all of this free content on YouTube and if you are interested in joining our community then you can do so this month because I am pausing for April. So if you've been thinking about it, March is definitely a good month because you won't be able to next month and it also means you get two for the price of one because I'm going to be pausing billing for April. With that being said, I hope you have a fantastic week ahead. I will see you next Sunday in my new YouTube video. See you later!